Welcome back guys. In today's video, I will be presenting some advanced use of Metasploit. So basically here, sometimes when you are doing penetration testing for a client, and suppose that the client is running Windows, and Windows, let's say the firewall, most firewalls in Windows, uh, you know, they block certain traffic in, the, uh, in their outbound policy, right? So with outbound rules, uh, some ports, let's suppose that some ports are blocked, and we can let's say some clients configure new rules like new ports and some ports like 444, 3434, 3233. These ports are blocked, right? If you remember that. So if we specify that in the connection and let's say block malicious ports. Now I'm doing that on a client, on a machine level. Corporations do that in their firewalls, right? In their intrusion detection systems. That's how they block certain ports on outbound and inbound traffic. So let's say we blocked these ports that are commonly used in Metasploit, right? So basically the first thing, how can we evade these kind of restrictions on in real case scenarios, right? So basically, some filters may allow all traffic out on certain ports. The most advanced filtering systems use something called content inspection. Okay, so to get around that, uh, let's create a practical scenario where we will uh, be trying to um, do it. We'll be trying to uh, hack this box over here. All right, and after hacking this box, we're going to use some. Uh, uh, the tail we're going to be using is called HTTP reverse shell. So here I designed or I created a payload with MSF Venom. So I did here, I put the architecture as x86 and the platform Windows. The payload is Windows Metaverter reverse TCP. So here I am relying solely on the browser uh, browser traffic, right? So basically, in most corporations, browsing, right, is allowed in the firewall. So you can browse on port 80, receive, and send traffic. So as inbound and outport rules are concerned, as far as these rules are concerned, uh, port 80 is allowed. So that's what we're going to what we're gonna use here today. We're going to use Windows Metaprotor Reverse TCP. L host is my client IP. The L port is 8080. And here, the targets uh, or the final extension is executable. And I use XOR Dynamic as an encoder, iteration 9. And I bind this uh, payload to an existing Windows app, which is VNC Viewer, right? Now, this command is not designed to evade detection. Now, it may certainly escape some uh, rudimentary and preliminary, preliminary detection on some hosts or Windows clients, but it may not work on Windows 10. So my objective in this video is not how to teach you how to evade detection. Technically, you can use shelter. Okay, shelter is a command line tool. We can, we're gonna talk about this, how to evade antivirus detection, right? But this command, we're gonna, it's gonna evade some detections, but not, that's not my purpose here. So if I hit enter, I will have some file, the application VNC viewer, and I transfer the VNC viewer to my Kali machine, uh, to the client box, let's say, okay? So now let's say you have sent an email to one of your, uh, to, to one of the employees in the company you are doing penetration testing for, and you wrap the email with an application uh, like Google Chrome, VNC viewer, whatsoever, it's all it's all related to the situation, right? Actually, you can also use Python uh, shell scripts instead of executable files. And suppose that you have used shelter to evade detection and the client installed the file. Now, before sending the file, what you need to do here, you need to launch MSF console. Okay, once MSF console has been launched, we're going to use, use uh, exploit multi-handler. All right. Now in here, I'm going to set payload. The payload should be the payload I used here, Windows Metaprotor Reverse TCP. TCP. That's how we escape firewalls in real case scenario. 
and set l host my IP. Show options, see what we have. All right, now the L URL. Okay, I don't think we need that. So one thing left is what if, guys, what if we send this uh, this executable file to the client and we don't want to wait till we get the connection back. You don't want to sit down here and wait for Metasploit to receive the connection. You want something more practical, right? You want to migrate the process into a new process once the connection has been established. So suppose that I open this app here, right? The client or the employee has opened the file and then immediately they sense there is something wrong with the application. So they immediately went ahead and closed the file. Your connection here will be dying or it will die, okay? So how to avoid that and how to just run the uh, handler, listener, and then go do, go, do your, go do your thing. You don't need to wait and sit down till, till you get the listener and then migrate the process. So in order to do that, we need to migrate or to set something called auto run script. Auto run script is set by using set auto run script. So by setting auto run script, I tell Metasploit, I'm telling him, look, hey, once you get the connection back from my victim or the client, run, launch the specified script. I specify the script here. In my case, I'm gonna migrate the process. So once the client opened the VNC viewer and suppose that they closed or they would go, they would close the application, my connection will not die. It will transfer and migrate over to a new process. That's how my connection stays alive. So I set auto script, auto run script migrate dash F. And good to go. Just run. Now we type exploit. And the client here will open this. You will see the connection here, as you can see. And now, if you open Task Manager, you see the running processes. So as you can see, VNC Viewer is run now it has been closed let's go back as you can see why it has been closed because metasploit has closed the process and migrated over to new process which is on pid 17800 let's go back to windows and see what is this process pid where is the pid here uh, it's not mentioned the pid i think why so let's view here set columns uh, PID, PID, process PID. Okay, here it is. So here, Kali has migrated to the process 1780. Let's go back, see what is the process. So Kali has migrated, or Metasploit has migrated to Notepad, right? Now, if I didn't set the auto run script to migrate to another process, once the client closed the VNC viewer, your session will die, okay? And although the Windows firewall here is running and blocking most malicious ports, my connection has worked because I used HTTP payload, right, or HTTPS. That's the uh, two things I wanted to mention to you guys because I received a question about this, uh, evading firewall with Metasploit, and uh, also how to not wait for the till you wait, till you get the connection back from the client. I don't want to wait. Just run the exploit and go and it will do its work. All right, now uh, that's what I wanted to mention in this video. It's a short video, but I am very sure that you will find it helpful and meaningful. Thank you so much.